today I am going to be walking you through one of my favorite kind of images to do, which is a surrealistic portrait. Um, in this case, of a woman turning into a honeycomb surrounded by bees, you got bee stings, little, little bumps, little pus here and there, but still very summery and bright, pastels, blue skies. I always love some contrast in dark and light elements. However, these techniques are very versatile and you don't have to go creepy. In fact, if you just removed the bee stings and maybe some of the uh, puffiness, the redness, you'll have a, a very kind of traditionally calming image. I do want to stress that these techniques are basically what I use to create any and every image I do. There's nothing fancy, there's nothing one-off. I like really solid everyday use techniques. And with that being said, I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus. Let's jump into it. To start everything off, we want to create a portrait style canvas with a 300 DPI. Um, that is what the resolution is. And then go ahead and drag and drop our subject onto the canvas. Next, go ahead and make a very rough selection using the magnetic lasso tool. Emphasis on rough selection. And also, don't touch the hair yet. I always save the hair for last when extracting any of my subjects, no matter what the case, because the hair always requires a little bit of extra finessing. Once you go ahead and add a layer mask to that selection, take a soft round brush, go ahead and start bringing back that depth of field to the flowers. Bringing your brush down to a low flow rate works wonders when making a very nice smooth transition to something. Even here, um, I could have used a bit of a larger brush, a bit of a fluffier brush. Once you are fairly happy with your flowers, though I could have used a little more work on mine, go ahead and drop in your replacement background, in this case a field of lavender flowers. Enlarge it fairly significantly. Um, and then I go ahead and add a shape blur to my lavender flowers. It gives you a little bit more texture, a little bit more textured blur than Gaussian blur, for instance. It's my absolute favorite way to add blur to most things. Then we're going to go ahead and add a bit more of a rolling hill effect using the warp tool found within the move and transform tool. To further blend those two backgrounds together, we want to brighten up those lavender flowers using a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Once you have your background nice and bright, now we're going to further blend in our flowers using a very soft round brush. We are going to adjust the lavender flowers colors a little bit using a selective color adjustment layer. And we can really bring out the pinks within the lavender to make them blend more. I always recommend using adjustment layers for virtually everything. Adjustment layers and smart objects. Those are your non-destructive editing dreams. Next up, we're going to create a new layer set to color. And then we're going to paint this little section here with green to help blend. We want to create a new layer and set it to a very dusty lavender color and then add some brightness to the flowers to further blend them. Next up, we are going to enlarge the eyes of our model. First, we want to redrop our subject onto our canvas and enlarge it, making sure it's larger than our current one. We want to take a rough selection of the eyes and you simply copy and paste them above our subject. Now, as you can see, the eyes are much too big here, but we always want to go bigger as opposed to smaller because we only want to shrink. We never want to enlarge an image and we only want the eyes to be a tad bit larger than what they already are. So as you can see, I lower the opacity of the copied eyes so I can easily, more easily place them in such a way where they don't look too far apart or too close together. They simply look like larger versions of the eyes that already existed. You also want to split the eyes up onto two different layers so you can adjust them separately. And then go ahead and take a soft round erasure brush tool and blend out those edges. Next, we're finally going to move on to the hair. And this is my absolute preferred method. I'm going to apply the layer mask that is currently onto the subject and then make a rough selection of the hair. Once you have your rough selection and your mask done, you want to double click on the mask and go to select the mask making sure the refine edge brush tool is selected and the smart radius option is checked. We want to bring the radius anywhere from five to eight. And then you want to drag your brush along the edge of the hair. You will see the edges of the hair, all the little strands start to be selected with none of the background or at least most of the background. 
you will have to go in and finesse it with a brush. In this case, I always use a single hair strand brush that I quite like that I teach in one of my other tutorials that you can find on Envato. What we're doing here is basically just painting back in some more of the hair strands as well as painting back in any of the any pieces of hair that might have been masked out that you actually want. Once you are happy with your hair strands, create and clip a new overlay layer into your subject. And with a very large soft round brush, paint white right on the edge of your hair, going in a little bit. What we're going to do here is build up the light over the course of multiple different layers. A low flow brush rate is, is a must when painting a very subtle gradient of light. To create this wash of light, we will mix and match several different overlay, soft light, and screen layers. I also like to create a normal layer and paint pure white on the very outer strands of hair. And to finish the hair up, we are going to add a wash of orange about midway to the hair using a very large low flow brush. I always like to add a very subtle glow to the hair. I think it helps blend everything together. What we are going to do is add some redness to the eyes. Choose a red and then with a very low flow soft round brush, slowly layer red onto the eyes, focusing on the already existing creases. This will also add a little bit of puffiness, which we will further enhance later. Once you are done with the eyes, go ahead and also add redness to the nose. Once again, really focusing mostly on the creases of the nose and kind of imagine what your nose might look like if your allergies were really bad and you're blowing your nose all day and it's all scratchy and dry and not great. Go ahead and create a new layer and set it to overlay. And then we're going to paint over the highlights of the eye using white and a very soft round brush, again with a low flow rate. We just want to bring up the highlights of the eye to enhance their puffiness. We are going to create some tears, or more like watery eyes. We don't want them you know, running down the face, not as if she's crying, but again, think allergies. Think very watery, irritated eyes. You first want a very hard, small brush. We're talking like one to two pixels and then a very low flow rate, definitely under 10%. You want to lightly drag your brush and slowly build up the light in certain areas and have it virtually not there in others. And to finish up the eyes, create a new layer, setting it to color. And then we want to color pick a blue from the sweater. And then we want to paint the eyes, keeping her brown inner iris, but just bringing in some of the blue from the sweater into her outer iris. Now that we are done with the eyes, we are actually going to start painting our bee stings. First, create a new layer, setting it to multiply. And with a fairly bright red, we want to paint blotches onto the skin. Once you're happy with your blotches, create another new layer, keeping it set to normal. And we're going to color pick a skin color from a slightly lighter area of the skin. And then again, with a very low flow, we want to essentially paint a circle. To finish up our hive, we want to create a new layer, setting it to multiply, and then just paint a tiny little dark red dot right in the middle of that, of that bump. Once you're happy with your hive, go ahead and paint um, as many more as you'd like. You could copy and paste, but I always suggest, just for the sake of things not looking copy and pasted, because oftentimes you can tell, is to simply just paint more. Create a new layer, setting it to color, and a very bright orange color. And then go ahead, with a fairly large soft round brush, create our orange base for our honeycomb effect. Next, we want to drop in our honeycomb stock image and shrink it down to where it will fit onto your model's forehead. You want to make a copy of your honeycomb for later use, and, and for the duplicate honeycomb, go ahead and suck out all the saturation and set that bad boy to soft light. This will be the base of your honeycomb and basically we are going to create multiple layers that get more and more solid as they go in. That sounds much more confusing than it actually is. We want the ridges to stand out um, as if they have texture and they are raised above the rest of the other skin. So you really want to focus on bringing out the ridges of the honeycomb. Again, just go back and forth on all your layers. Keep building that honeycomb up little by little. Make one more copy of that original honeycomb, add a layer mask, invert it, and this time just paint in straight solid honey. 
as it is now it looks like she has holes in her head almost so we want to brighten up and adjust the color of these honeycomb cells first using a color balance adjustment layer we want to jack up the red and slightly increase the yellows next clip a curves adjustment layer and recreate something to what you see on screen Finally, create and clip a brightness and contrast adjustment layer into the combs and just crank up the brightness and remove a lot of that contrast. Finally, to finish up our honeycomb, we want to create a normal layer above all other honeycomb layers. And with, with a very small soft round brush, we want to paint solid white highlights over the little honeycomb cells and the ridges. Next up, we are going to add our honey dripping down from our forehead. Go ahead and shrink it down, and then using the warp function of the transform tool, keep in mind the curve of the forehead, and the foreheads are rounded, and so the honey wouldn't be dripping straight down. Once you're happy with the shape of your honey, go ahead and set that first layer to multiply. Go ahead and make some color adjustments using a color balance layer to the honey. Again, we want to jack the red up fairly high, and then introduce some blue in there too to give it a really deep honey feel. Next, create a new layer, setting it to soft light. First, we're going to paint the base of our honey's highlights. Um, nothing too stark yet. Just kind of paint the general light parts and the general dark parts. Again, setting your brush to a low flow rate, always recommended. Create a new layer and set it to multiply. Using a lot of golden oranges, bright, dark, and medium, to make our honey look more viscous, more solid, we are going to paint some shadows underneath our honey. Create another new layer, once again another soft light layer, and further bring out those highlights using a white or a very pale yellow. If needed, you can always erase the harsh edges of the honey. I ended up doing that and ended up liking the effect much, much more. And then creating one more soft light layer to bring out both the highlights, but mainly with this one, the shadows and that nice deep orange color that honey tends to have. I actually went back here and added some orange using a soft light layer to the hairline to help blend that in a little bit more. And to finish everything off, we want to create a overlay layer and then using a white to a very pale light orange color, paint in your final highlights. These will be those very strong highlights that you always save for last and to kind of bring out not only the highlights in the dripping honey, but in the honeycomb cells that are underneath the honey. Finally, to tie in this honey theme, we are going to add our honey bees and we will be using the Bumblebee 3D renders by Pixel Squid on Envato Elements. And the best thing about these bees is that since they are 3D rendered, they are pre-extracted and include a shadow. So you want to go ahead and download some of the standing bees along with some of the flying bees, both by Pixel Squid on Envato Elements. Pick a few angles of each, and you can delete the advanced layer group that comes with your PSD. Next, you want to drag and drop your bee image onto your canvas, and go ahead and shrink it down. Once you're happy with the placement of your bumblebee, go ahead and go to the shadow layer that is included in your download. Go ahead and go to that shadow layer and set it to multiply and then set the color to a light brown color. Shadows are actually very rarely, if ever, um, black. They will always have color. You always want some of the color of the object the shadow is on to be reflected in that shadow. Next, you want to create a new layer, set soft light, and clip it into your bee. Here, we're just going to brighten the bee up and add any shadows if needed, but mostly just brighten up the body, the head, the eyes, the legs. You want to create a new layer, keeping it set to normal, and just brighten the wings up um, using pure white. To finish off the bee, we're going to create a curves layer, again, clipping it into the bee, and just really jacking up those highlights and even the shadows. We want the bee to be fairly bright. And also a brightness contrast layer to uh, remove the contrast of the bee even more and adjust the brightness slightly, but this is more to just really beat down that contrast to make them almost pastel bees. And then go ahead and repeat this process with all your other bees. However, each bee will require their own attention and love and care, so keep that in mind. If one bee seems too bright, bring down the brightness. If one needs more contrast, bring up the contrast. Not all bees are created equal, so just keep the environment and the individual bee in mind. Once you're happy with the placement of all your bees, um, we added some flying bees. So of course their little bee wings would just be flapping their hearts out. Um, a great way to do this is to right click, merge group one of our bees, and we want to convert it to a smart object. Add a blur, 
motion blur and then adjust the blur accordingly. Once you have the motion blur on, you want to invert the smart filters layer mask so that it is filled with black and then using a soft round brush, just mask back in that filter just on the wings and on the outside of the body and any part that you think would have motion if a bee was in flight. But we are going to add some quick depth to the image um, by just selecting just the green leaves of the tulip with the magic wand tool. You really don't have to worry about the selection here. It's going to look crazy as long as you only have green leaves. Go ahead and copy and paste your selection. We just want to increase it significantly. And then go ahead and go to blur, shape blur. Go ahead and just blur the bejeebus out of those leaves. We are going to go ahead and create a new layer, keeping it set to normal and with a very, very, very large brush, just create a giant blob of white haze coming from the sky and going down to about mid of the canvas. And finally, to finish everything off, we're going to do one of my favorite parts, which is color grading. This will ultimately bring everything together and just tie everything up with a cohesive color story. We use a total of something like eight adjustment layers. I've used, I've used more. I've probably used upwards of 15. It's like frosting a cake. It's like, it's like frosting a cake. You're hiding all the crumbs and you're bringing it all together. It's when I know I'm basically done with an image is when I'm just piling on the adjustment layers. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. And there you have it. A surreal, slightly creepy, be inspired tutorial to get you ready for springtime um, and all the allergies that come with it. I'm Abby Esparza with Envato Touch Plus and check out all the other wonderful tutorials that can be found at tutsplus.com.